Hello, everyone. Can you hear me well? Okay. Yes. Yes. Awesome. I didn't get it exactly uh, if the name of the presentation was uh, at the beginning, but the presentation will be about Kubernetes build packs. Uh, and as my colleague said, uh, I am Adam Kozłowski. I work at GrapeUp. Uh, and I am a technical leader in the Cloud Booster project in GrapeUp, uh, which is a Kubernetes deployment project. Uh, I am also a certified Kubernetes administrator, and I have experience with over six Cloud Native for Kubernetes projects in the last years. Um, and I am also a DevOps Days Krakow community member, so feel invited. Uh, in a few weeks, uh, the registration will be open. Um, the biggest clients that I worked for uh, were Avaya uh, from US, Syncom, Cloud Booster, of course, in the Protic, uh, uh, in Graypub, uh, Rigswaterstadt, which is Ministry of Infrastructure uh, in Netherlands, Allstate Insurance, and Porsche. Uh, I also help Protic Biosciences uh, in distributed systems. Okay, a quick uh, table of contest, what we will cover in this presentation. Um, what is a build pack? A Cloud Foundry developer experience. Anyone heard about Cloud Foundry? Raise your hands. So a few, nice. Um, and replicating the idea of build packs in Kubernetes. Um, build pack stages, cloud native build packs, build flow, building, and demo. I'm quite nervous about the last one because it should be live demo, and I'm not really uh, sure if the internet works correctly here, but we will see. Um, one more question. Who has a hands-on experience on Kubernetes? Almost everyone. Awesome. Okay. So what is a build pack? Build pack is a tool uh, which converts the source code from the very high abstraction level, which converts a source code to the application artifact. For Kubernetes, application artifact will be container image, which will run in the cluster. Uh, the, the build pack creates a very high-level abstraction for developers. Uh, so instead of uh, figuring out how to build container, how to use Docker, how to run the, their source code in, in Kubernetes, in the cluster, they just have a single tool or single script which will grab their source code, build it, and run in the cluster. This is very similar to CI-CD idea. But the difference is uh, it is almost all, all, all out of the box created by uh, Buildpacks.io. There are multiple solutions for that. Uh, in this presentation, I will cover the open source one, the Buildpacks.io. Uh, and the way uh, we in GrapeUp changed it, like did a POC, proof of concept, of uh, running the pack inside the Docker uh, container in the cluster to build the uh, image. Uh, and run it in the same or different cluster. Uh, the advantage of using build packs is also the compatibility, because build packs IO or build packs itself should create OCI, OCI image. Uh, and OCI image are compliant with most of the platforms we have right now and should run on Racket, Docker, or wherever we want to run them. So 99% of cases it will run in your Kubernetes cluster. Also, the problem I have noticed in, uh, for a, a lot of our clients was that um, when they were, uh, were switching from different types of uh, building, like building and pushing the artifact to the uh, artifactory, uh, the Docker uh, is not something... This is, so Docker is something which is very common for us, for uh, operational managers, for site reliability engineers, but for, for regular developers, uh, it is something new, and it may be hard. Uh, and the, the problem is that uh, the Docker is very easy to use initially, but it's not that easy to use correctly. Uh, people tend to grab any Docker image they have from, from the repository, public image, without uh, thinking about security, without thinking about compliance, without thinking about updates, uh, and we, sometimes even without checking the version of the libraries installed in the build pack. And this is the problem which build pack should solve. Okay, so what was the great thing about Cloud Foundry, or Pivotal Cloud Foundry? Uh, Cloud Foundry was a platform, 
so a tool designed for DevOps guys, for platform engineers, which was focused on developer experience. So the, the focus was not on easy, easy of maintenance, easy of upgrades, or a uh, small footprint on the uh, hardware, but the focus was on how easy it will be to run the source code, the workloads, for developers in the cluster or on the platform. And uh, one of the creators of Cloud Foundry, uh, Onsi, I don't know how to pronounce his last name, uh, created a CF push haiku, which is, here's my source code, run it in on the cloud for me, I don't care how. And this is what a lot of big uh, R&D enterprises do right now with Cloud Foundry. They don't care about where is the platform, how it works, they just see a login, see a push in the directory with their source code, and everything else is managed by operators. And in this case, they can very quickly deploy their application to the cluster or to the platform, run it and see it, uh, how it works and test it and maybe change it from the POC or MVP to correct microservices application. So the question will be, this is the CF push experience, right? And uh, Pivotal and Heroku created build packs mainly for Cloud Foundry and their platforms. And can we replicate the same situation in Kubernetes? The situation when developer can just grab the source code, go to the directory of the project, do C CF push or any other kind of the push, which will build and run their application in the cluster. And the answer is yes. Yes, we can. Uh, and as I mentioned before, there is a tool called uh, Buildpacks.io, which is not just a pack CLI tool, which is part of the project, but also a specification of Buildpacks. Um, and the specification covers all parts of the Buildpacks, all layers, the run layer, which runs the application, uh, the lifecycle layer, which runs the strategy of building the, the, the code, the, the build packs itself uh, for multiple languages like Python, Java, Go, C Sharp, whatever. Uh, and the build image, which runs uh, the lifecycle strategy inside and build the final image. And the stages of using the build pack will be first grab the source code either pack it or send it somehow to the uh, builder image or builder container. Uh, also, sometimes, depending on the platform and depending on the solution, there will be manifest which will describe what are other dependencies on the cloud. So, for example, in Kubernetes, maybe we want to create an ingress or load balancer or an, any other dependencies that are there. The second step is detect and analyze. Uh, the source code which we will send to the builder which will be, anal will be analyzed um, by all of the build packs which are registered uh, in the lifecycle. Which means it will check the files uh, and see which build pack fits the most to build it. And it doesn't have to be one build pack. For example, in Python, there are multiple build packs. The most common ones like are Python runtime, which is just Python well, runtime distributable, uh, which will run the code. And there is also a PAP build pack, which will download and build all dependencies and install it. And those are different build pack layers. Um, the next step is build. So when the correct build packs are chosen, uh, the code is being built by the builder image using that specific build packs. Because sometimes there is also a situation when non not all build packs fit the same. Uh, there may be better fit and a worse fit. Uh, the, the build pack uh, lifecycle will choose the best ones. And that's almost the end of the build pack tool as it is. But the next step we really want to do is deploy the application, uh, send it to the registry, uh, and run it in the cluster. So. About build pack CIO. The solution is OCI compliant. This means any workload uh, which will be any artifact which will be created by this uh, build pack will be uh, running on any OCI compliant runtime. So Docker is OCI compliant, Racket is OCI compliant. Most of the uh, well known 
uh, Docker container runtimes are OCI compliant right now. And OCI is also open source specification, so anyone who creates the Docker runtimes will for sure check OCI. And the, there is a support built in uh, uh, for multiple languages. And this is part of the history of Buildpacks itself, because initially the Buildpacks were created by Heroku. Maybe you know that company, it was the very first days of cloud native, uh, the 12 factor applications, uh, and all of that stuff was created by Heroku. Uh, and after a few years, the Pivotal created their own version of uh, build packs to use it with Cloud Foundry. And this was uh, called CF Linux FS. It's now CF Linux FS 3 or 4, uh, which is the latest version. Uh, but they diverged from the original path created by Heroku. So there were two versions there were Heroku build packs and Pivotal Cloud Foundry build packs. Um, and lately, I think it was last year, or maybe a uh, year and a half ago, they've decided to merge the, those two paths because there was uh, no interest in uh, maintaining two uh, separate branches of build packs and create the open source version, uh, which was called Buildpacks.io and is created uh, uh, by Pivotal and Heroku by, uh, in part. And they are both working on the same build pack solution right now. And right now it is open source, so anyone can use it. Uh, and the CLI they created, which is called Pack, is very easy to use. Um, it's just Pack build, so it's probably almost the same as CF Push, but it doesn't cover the steps called the push itself to the platform. Um, advantages of Buildpacks.io. Uh, is that it supports both Cloud Foundry builders and Heroku builders right now, and it is easily switchable with the CLI uh, command out of the pack. Uh, so there is no uh, requirement to use any specific build pack. You can even create your custom own ones and so far. Uh, is it used in small CLI? It's just a single file CLI. There is no requirement for specific installations or, or anything for that. And of course, uh, the result is OCI compliant. But there are also disadvantages, unfortunately. I, I feel their documentation is quite bad. It's very hard to find anything useful in there, even the description about what it does exactly, um, or even what build pack is. There is no list of build packs that are there right now. The only way to check that is the CLI. There is no list of languages. Uh, which are supported by build packs as for now, which is quite a problem because this is the documentation for the creators of the software may not be the most important part, but for the users, which even as a platform engineers we will be, it is quite a, an issue. Um, and the other problem is the build packs are not that small. I mean, the tool is very small, but the build packs itself are Docker images. Uh, and it has to be downloaded. I kind of tested it uh, two days ago in a hotel uh, just to see if I can uh, download it with very, very slow internet connection. And it's approximately two gigabytes of data which will be downloaded uh, at the first time. And the solution for that will be to use cache, which is supported. It's just the drive or directory in the container which will hold the cache for the uh, pack. Um, but they don't say it explicitly anywhere, uh, but from, from the code and from the issues in the GitHub, it seems that cache is not, uh, uh, not working correctly with uh, multi-threaded or access from multiple containers at once. So there has to be some kind of mutex which will uh, protect the access to cache from multiple sources at once. And the other disadvantage of the tool itself Maybe it's not really a disadvantage for us because most of uh, the platform engineers has Docker installed and has most of the tools which are required installed. Uh, but Docker installation is a required for pack. And a lot of enterprises I, I've seen uh, don't have Docker for developers because they didn't have to, uh, requirement for that before. And the problem is installing any new tool, even if, if it's well known or it's just a Docker, may be a problem, or if it's, even if it's not a problem, it may take time. Um, so this is clearly a disadvantage for, not, not for everyone, 
uh, but for people who work in main and uh, in big enterprises which doesn't allow you to do anything with your computer okay and the build flow first it is a source code and the, the icon at the top is the pack icon and then what happens uh, the source code is uh, grabbed by pack and the life cycle uh, will uh, analyze the source code using the build packs which are registered right now. Uh, this example is about Python. So the build packs which will be checked will be Python, PAP, but also Java, .NET, and whatever there is. And the chosen ones will be Python and PIP. And those build packs will be used by builder to build the layers of uh, applications. And these steps, so the build packs are that fit the specific applications and the runtime will remain there as a stack image. So the pack will use all of the layers to build the image and set it to the Docker registry. Um, I used Harbor because it has nicer icon and then Docker has the same icon as the Docker runtime. Uh, so it is uh, the idea is to send it later to the Docker registry and run it on the target cluster. Uh, the whole thing in the white at the middle, uh, we wanted to run in the cluster too, because it will ch uh, shift the dependencies requirement from the developer to the Docker image which will run the build time. Um, so how complex can the builder image be if we want to hold pack inside, Docker in Docker, and all of the stuff which is required? Probably complex. Or maybe not. So the idea is to use Docker in Docker image, uh, which is provided by Docker. Uh, and the only tools uh, that are really required is the pack and dependencies to install pack uh, in, the, in the image. And we run the entry point of the Docker in Docker. Uh, and this is the whole builder image, which we run in the cluster. And in, in this image, we will run the pack, CLI. Um, so what will be the build process if you want to run the whole process in the cluster? First, run the builder image. And here, I created a simple uh, pod manifest for the image. It's just type pod. Uh, we don't need deployment, because if it restarts, something is wrong anyway, and we need to delete it. Uh, the Docker image which is created from the manifest I provided before. Um, name, all of that. The important thing will be to have a path for Docker to hold uh, its requirements and layers. So Docker and Docker storage. This is also required requirement for the Docker and Docker image. And the one requirement which is quite important is the Docker in Docker image has to run in a privileged container which also doesn't fit any everyone, uh, but uh, depending on the situation, it may, may be fair. It doesn't work without the privileged container because it requires to run the Docker inside, and Docker requires the access to uh, the, uh, guest, uh, the host system. So the next step when we have the running builder image will be to push code to the container. Uh, and I used kubectl CP, which will just grab the data and push it in the container. It's easy. Uh, run the image, execute pack inside the source code directory, and push the result into the image repository. When the result is in the repository, we can do kubectl run or create a deployment file, manifest, template, whatever, uh, to run the image in the cluster, and then kubectl expose, or also, again, the service or ingress manifest to expose the resulting application to the world. And the manifest template for the ingress is also very easy. Uh, there is no single command version of create ingress, so manifest had to be created even for the POC or MVP solution, which I tried to uh, replicate. Um, so the type is ingress, name, uh, labels with the creator, so it can be easily removed. Uh, and th this is the traffic ingress controller, but it doesn't have to be at all. 
it can be all, uh, the annotation can be empty anyway. Uh, and this ingress object will allow the application to be visible in the ingress. And now is the part when I will try to show you the source code and how it works. Um, can you tell me if you can see it from the last rows? I assume yes. Nobody is complaining, at least. Um, uh, a lot of the code. This is the uh, CB push uh, source code, which is proprietary to GrayPub, unfortunately. Um, so there is so there are some parts that are not important for this presentation, which are just handle the uh, getting access to the cluster and all of that stuff. Uh, but the important part starts uh, when we compress the application code. So when we run this script from the source code uh, directory, we will compress everything to the package. Uh, and then run we, we run the builder container. This is the same manifest I have shown in the presentation. Uh, so the, the same uh, do Docker uh, image, which is in uh, Docker Hub, the same, the same privileged container, the same mount for, for Docker. And the next step is to run this manifest uh, with the wait. I uh, actually run the wait to wait for the uh, application to start because we want to send the code later on to it. Uh, so we are waiting 60 seconds for the condition ready, which means the application is up and running in the cluster. So the builder is running. Then we do kubectl cp. Uh, so we copy the uh, whole source code to the uh, builder uh, TMP directory, which is accessible even from the outside. And then we run the script, which will uh, create a Docker configuration file. Uh, this is not important if you don't use insecure registries. Uh, but sometimes if you want to use uh, insecure registry, you need to create this uh, Docker configuration file and then push the insecure registries list into this file. Mm. And the next step, which is quite strange, but I it is also very important. Uh, the Docker in Docker, uh, for some reason, does not start even if you use the same entry point on Kubernetes. So we need to start it manually. So we, we run it, but we just redirect all the logs. Uh, so it doesn't uh, show uh, when we are running the script. Then we create the build directory, uh, set the default build pack. The default build pack here will be Cloud Foundry, Cloud Native, CNB is Cloud Native Builder, and the version C of Linux FS3. And in the builder, we go to that directory, unpack the application, uh, remove the, uh, that Git directory. This is important but because uh, Java build pack somehow treats it uh, as a source code and tries to build it. And it takes like five minutes, and then everything crashes. Uh, and the, the next step, we do pack build uh, of the project with the name which is provided uh, as a parameter. And then from inside the container, remember we have Docker inside, so we can use Docker commands. So we do Docker login to the registry. Uh, we tag the image and push it to the registry. It can be just regular. Uh, Docker, uh, uh, Docker Hub or any ca uh, custom registry, it's up to you. And then we grab the image and run it. This is the same image we pushed in this step. Uh, and it has correct labels, it is dry run and apply, so it creates the manifest so we can re repeat the process every time we want. Uh, the dry run and apply is just a little hack because dry run will output the correct manifest without applying it, and then we do apply. If we do a kubectl run without that, and then we repeat the kubectl run on the same name of the uh, deployment, it will just uh, stop and uh, respond with an error that the application already exists. But we, if we repeat the apply process, it doesn't matter because apply just upgrades the, the image. And then we do expose. Uh, of the deployment with the specific name. This is cluster IP because it will be accessed by the ingress. 
uh, again with uh, labels and again with apply hack. And the last part is the ingress manifest, which I shown before. Uh, also exactly the same uh, as the last step. And there is, uh, at the end, the builder image will be removed uh, because there is a trap on exit. So even if the script crashes, the, uh, the pod of the builder will be removed anyway. So let's run it, if the internet works. Um, first, let's check what's in the cluster, if it's running at all. It's running. That's nice. So let's check this uh, directory. This is just a single, very simple Flask Python application. It exposes the port 3000 and runs uh, just a single route, a single endpoint, HTTP, uh, which will now say dev ops days or so demo. Uh, as you have seen, we have nothing like that in the cluster, I hope. Nope. So the script uh, is called CP push because I didn't want to rename it because I will forget what's the new name. And the first parameter will be the name of the application, so it might be demo or whatever. And the second parameter will be the port, which is used uh, in the service uh, operation. Mm. OK. And now the script is running. First part will is packaging the project files. This is the list of the files which will be packaged. So this is our application. There is a proc file and a requirements file. This will result in the use of two build packs, one for the requirements txt, which will be the pip build pack, and one for the uh, Python files, which will be Python runtime. And next step, setting the default builder. Where is this? OK, so the, the default builder is set to CF Linux FS3. And the project uh, files are unpacked. And now the pack runs. So CF Linux FS is being pulled from the repository. This is just Git, uh, GitHub repository. Pull complete. Um, and now it pulls the run image. And the run image is a secure Docker image which can hold all the uh, additional layers of the running application. But it's maintained by Pivotal and they and Heroku, and they say it is secure. Uh, it has every, only the, the parts that are important for running applications, and everything that should be blocked is by default blocked. Uh, and now the detect phase. So the, the, the lifecycle tool decided we want to use two uh, of the build packs. Is there a list which was? No, it doesn't show this list. Uh, two build packs. First build pack will be Python runtime. The, the build pack version is 57. And the second build pack is PAP, the version uh, 53. Uh, and there is no cache uh, because we run it in the cluster. And uh, to avoid situation when multiple people will run the same script uh, on the same cluster, I just skip the cache uh, mounting. Uh, then it checks if uh, in the repository, which is inside the Docker in Docker uh, container, there, if there is an image called the same uh, as uh, the image we built right now, and if there will be this kind of image with the same name, it will check all the layers, if any of the layers can, be, can remain uh, without building. And next it runs the build packs, so Python runtime, it just downloads the Python, specific version for CF Linux FS, checking the uh, checksum, expanding, setting all required paths. The, and then the next build pack, the pip build pack. Uh, and it downloads all, all packages uh, from for the requirements txt file. So Flask, Jinja, all of the stuff, uh, which are dependencies of Flask. 
and then it's contributing to layer, which means it creates its own layer for the lifecycle, which will run later. And now the exporting phase. So the, the resulting image is now being created. The first layer is the application layer. So our build application, in, for Python, it will be just the Python source code. Uh, the configuration layer, the launcher layer, which is just the service that launches the application, the uh, Docker image. And our two build back, uh, building results, so the Python runtime, and Python packages, which are dependencies of our application. Uh, it will now cache the layers. So if we run the same command in the same uh, container again, it will reuse the images that uh, the layers that can uh, be reused. And now it's pushing the mm, image to the repository. It's just a Docker Hub Docker IO and running this image uh, as a deployment. Let's see if it's running. It is. And we have now, welcome to DevOps Days Warsaw demo. Um, the Pax CLI can run anywhere. Uh, there should be a command. Okay, so the command's here. Uh, the build will just build the image from the source code. The only parameter will be the name uh, of the container which will be created. Uh, the build, uh, the run command will build and run the image. Uh, but this will run in the same Docker instance which is running inside the, the container, which is not really a great idea. Um, rebase will just rebase the application with the latest run image, so we can consider this as an upgrade of the underlying image, la image layers. Uh, you can create all your own builders, you can set a uh, default builder, uh, or see the list of suggested builders, like so just... Uh, builders. Okay, and this is the list of the builders that are working right now uh, and are supported by pack uh, by default. So this is Heroku build packs version 18. Cloud Foundry is in Bionic. This is the new version of the CF Linux FS and CF Linux FS3. And there is also a list of supported languages. So the Heroku can be used for Ruby, Java, Node.js, Python, Golang, and PHP. The Bionic only for Java, Node.js, and Golang. And uh, CF Linux FS for Java, .NET, which is, uh, I think, mainly .NET Core. Node.js, Python, Golang, PHP, HTTPD, and Nginx. And this is, uh, if you have any experience with Cloud Foundry, it is called, uh, I think, Static File Build Pack. It will just run the uh, HTTP server, which will host your files. Um, so that's for the demo. And we have like five minutes for the questions. Do I have any questions? Uh, Kinative, uh, the question was, do you have any idea about Kinative? You mean it's a serverless, right? Yes, uh, the, the problem with uh, that is um, in the enterprise we worked for, the requirement to, was to have the artifact which will be created from the specific Docker images, which they can run in their container uh, and held in their artifactory. And they said we, they cannot use serverless, so we, we just decided to use the build packs. Any other questions? Okay, so thank you.